the performance issue is broken down into components as well. Why do we have a performance problem? Well, first of all, right out of the gate, we have, number one, we have lost 50% of our horsepower. Well, airplanes climb due to excess horsepower. So we've lost 50% of our horsepower. However, we have lost 80 to 90% of our climb performance. 80 to 90 percent of our climb performance. You might say, how does half of the airplane, how does half your horsepower loss cause almost 90 percent of your climb performance loss? Well, the FAA and their Flying Information Handbook, they make it pretty simple for us. And we'll just use similar numbers. The Diamond Twin Star on the sensor on engine that we have in it right now produces a full thrust 135 horsepower per engine. Well, let's just assume that it takes 125 horsepower for a level flight. I don't know that. I don't know what it is. But let's do the math. 135 plus 135 is 270 horsepower minus 125 horsepower is 145 excess horsepower to climb with. However, if I cut one of its engines out, I'm now, again, assuming that it requires 125 horsepower for level flight. I now only have 10 excess horsepower. So, why do we have a performance problem? I've lost 50% of my horsepower. I've lost 80 to 90% of my climb performance because an airplane climbs due to excess horsepower. I maybe had 145 excess horsepower. That's assuming, just assuming, that took 125 horsepower for level flight and I don't know what that number is. However, now I may only have 10 excess horsepower, and that excess horsepower is going to be chewed up if I don't clean up the drag. So that's performance issue. Another performance, another element of the performance problem is drag. And, and I really got, I've really got three types of drag. First off, I have parasite drag, drag parasite, um, with drag P like this. I have parasite drag. Why? Because this engine, this prop is windmilling. And when this prop windmills, it catches air. And when it catches air, it has to perform work. So it's going to spin the gearbox shaft, which spins the gearbox, which turns the engine pistons. And because that engine's doing all this work, we have a tremendous monumental amount of drag. It would be like trying to maybe push a Volkswagen uh, in third gear versus putting the clutch in. So that's one element of drag. Drag, parasite drag due to propeller. Now, another element of drag, another element of drag is parasite drag due to side slip. Sometimes I find people have a hard time understanding the side slip thing. And the minute we convert it to, well, remember when we became a private pilot and we learned how to do slips. We did forward slips that were, when we disaligned, for lack of a better word, the, the longitudinal axis, we would put rudder in and then drop a wing to, to misalign the longitudinal axis of the runway. And we would be using the side of the airplane as a braking effect. And it works pretty good. Now imagine if we're trying to go uphill doing that same thing. Now suddenly we can connect dots in a hurry to see why we have to really, really get on top of proper rudder management when we lose an engine. This little 10 excess horsepower we have to climb with it is going to be nothing if we can't get this propeller shut off and feathered and this drag side slip put to bed with proper footwork. And it's probably the number one issue in teaching people to fly multi-engine in the Twin Star 
because it takes such an unbelievable amount of rudder to continuously keep that thing lined up. All right, the third element of drag, and the fourth total problem in performance, is the fact that I have drag due, in, due to uh, induced drag. And induced drag is due to the fact that I have a higher AOA. I have a higher angle of attack. Why do I have a higher angle of attack? Because, let's go to this little equation right here. I have a higher angle of attack. For those of you who are math majors, this will really help you. Or for who like math. For those of you who don't like math, don't shut down. It, it's, really not, uh, it's really not that complex. If you just accept this equation, lift is equal to one half times the air density. That's a Greek symbol rho times the velocity squared times the surface area of the wing times the coefficient of lift. Now let's let's just realize coefficient of lift has has two components and we're just going to call it angle of attack here though. So let's just look at the basics. If I have something on the left side of the equation lift, I want to stay the same. If not, I mean I, I, I really like it to grow. I'd like to continue climbing out on one engine. But let's say I lose an engine, I want to at least keep myself 40 feet above the runway. If velocity just went down because I lost an engine, we're going to slow it down, then something else had to happen over here to go up. Well, it was an angle attack. Because I can't raise the air density, <laughs> I, can't, uh, I can't increase the surface area of the wing unless I have a foul or flat. So the only thing I can do to offset my loss in lift when I lose an engine is to increase my angle of attack. But unfortunately, when I increase my angle of attack, I get another great big set of problems out of it. Because as I increase my angle of attack, I increase P factor. I like to think of it that, that it keeps marching to the right. Other people think of it that it grows this way really doesn't matter. What you need to understand is that it's going to get big in a hurry and it's going to torque, tend to torque the airplane to the left. And this drag, again, is going to tend to do the same thing. So that's the cycle we have to break in a hurry or as I slow down more, I have to increase this more and I start to turn more. And as I slow down more, I have to increase this more and I start to turn more. So what happens is I ultimately VMC the airplane where I, I lose control of it and uh, essentially um, it, it'll happen fairly quick if we don't address the issue. That is multi-engine aerodynamics. Um, if you know this and you know it well, going into your check ride, you'll do fine. But most importantly, you'll live to talk about it another day if it happens to you. And with Midwest Corporate Air, <clears throat> the beauty of training in a Diamond Twin Star, because they're water-cooled engines and um, they restart so easily, I can give you multiple, multiple engine failures and you'll get to the point where you're just um, very good and very quick at going through the process.